Hello friends, Christian here with Brick Life Crisis. This channel is recommended for adult fans of LEGO and teen fans of LEGO. If you are younger than the age of 13, you're welcome to watch, but first, get your parents' permission. Hello friends, Christian here with Brick Life Crisis again. Uh, for those of you that are interested, you've probably already seen The Mandalorian, so um, I don't think there will be any spoilers in this video. In fact, I'm sure there won't be, um, but something might slip out. So if you haven't seen it already, I apologize in advance if I let something slip, but there's nothing really here. This is featured in uh, an episode, two or three episodes in, and uh, it's basically an ATST uh, walker and... Uh, it is not being used by the Imperials. It uh, was left behind somewhere and some bad guys have it. There's the spoiler. Um, but anyway, it's a pretty decent model and uh, it comes with some cool figures. Let's go ahead and open it up, build it up, and see what we think. Right, here it is, set number 75254. This is from The Mandalorian. It's an ATST. As you can see, it includes four minifigures, and they also included the ultra rare brick separator. Very cool. All right, let's take a closer look. So, the big thing you'll notice here is the legs are a very different color from any of the ATSTs we've gotten in the past. They are red and brown, respectively, with some stickers for accents. Um, it's essentially the same build as the one that we got a few years back. Um, however, it's uh, very different in its coloring, as I said. Um, the build was pretty good, and I think other than the uh, the coloring, again, it's pretty much the same as what you got in the past. So if you already have an ATST, you don't necessarily need this one again, except you might want to get it for the figures. Um, but uh, as you can see, the legs being red and brown are the biggest difference. And then the core of the, uh, the body itself, uh, if this is the head, these are the legs, this being the body, um, has some nice greebling on it that uh, was not on previous versions. Let's see if we can get a better look at that. So underneath what would be the back of the head, we have some paint rollers and some other things in there that are just added as greebling. Then you have these things, those are stickers, uh, just to represent some additional stuff. This brown coloring, the red coloring, um, all of these stickers down here, um, they're all just supposed to represent kind of a, I think, kind of a repair job that was done by the Klaatuian Raiders on an abandoned ATST. And so they did what they could to get it up and running um, when it was left behind. You have some uh, wires running around different places just to kind of emphasize the fact that this thing has been rebuilt and is not really um, up to snuff with what would have been Imperial standards. Um, although I suppose it's possible that in some ways it might have even been improved. Um, this is also a sticker on either side here. Um, as you can see I just took the head off so that I could get these closer up angles for you. It does have the uh, knob on the back, just like the most recent ones, that uh, turns this piece, and that allows you to spin the head from side to side. So by turning this, the head will shift. Um, speaking of the head, it is also a little bit different in that the coloring, there's a lot of dark gray in here, whereas the other ones were mostly lighter gray. Um, this is a sticker here with some detailing on it. Same sticker on the other side. You have these Nexo Nice shields and some uh, light gray ingots that kind of help add some detail. Uh, we have a couple of uh, side mounted weapons. There's a dual barrel weapon here. More stickers. Uh, another sticker for the hatch there. Um, this opens up like so to reveal the cockpit. Inside there is a sidearm and just enough room for one figure to pilot. Uh, there's a sticker there on a little console, and just to show you the weapon on the other side, it's another dual barrel thing, whoops, that falls off very easily. So that weapon looks pretty good, but as you saw, it does fall off pretty simply, but it can elevate up and down, and uh, there's that shield there that has a, a sticker, and then this is also a sticker. But overall, it's not too bad. 
All right, first up we have a Klaatuian Raider. He includes a medium gunmetal gray blaster with a brown lightsaber hilt extension uh, to make for a, a longer weapon, which is cool. We take that off and get a little bit better look at the figure itself. It's got a nice print there. That necklace he's wearing almost looks like a, a croissant <laughs> at the bottom, um, but it's pretty cool. He's got some, um, I don't know, rags or something around his waist hanging down on the legs. He's got an interesting um, kind of neck guard. It looks like the bottom part of a old Darth Vader helmet. I'm not sure if that's what it is, but um, anyway, not a bad print. No alternate face, of course, because his head is exposed, um, but the face he does have is pretty good. The other Raider is very similar. It's the same legs, actually, uh, but the uh, print on the torso is a little bit different. He also has some armor with spikes on the one shoulder, uh, and he has a helmet rather than that uh, uh, neck guard. But uh, overall, not a bad figure, and incidentally, no alternate face for this guy either. Um, it's essentially the same head as the other one. I think, yeah, pretty much. So anyway, this guy comes with two of uh, the nozzle pistols um, that have been used several times before, but uh, anyway, not too bad. Next up is Cara Dune. Um, she has a long rifle with a lightsaber extension, making for a very long weapon, which is cool, but it's almost too long. It's kind of ridiculously long in comparison. I mean, it's taller than the figure. Um, the figure itself is good, though. Cardoon has a nice torso print, along with some good print on the waist and legs as well. Nice face, a little bit darker skin tone than necessary, I think, but it's all right. Uh, good hair piece, and if we remove that, we can see the print on the back of the torso, as well as her alternate face. And finally, here we have Mando, the Mandalorian. Um, it's got a nice print there on the legs and torso. Um, he's got a cool helmet. It's basically the Boba Fett helmet, but different coloring. He has a thin cape on, uh, thin, I mean, narrow. Um, it's the older style kind of almost papery cape, which is okay, but uh, just flip that up a little bit so you can see the print underneath. Um, there is no... Um, targeting thing that goes inside. You can see the hole for it because uh, it's the same mold that they've used for Boba Fett that does have that targeting thing, but this guy doesn't. Um, and underneath we just have a blank black head. I really appreciate that. Um, it's not really necessary for this guy. You can just barely make out underneath what would be flesh tone if they had a printed head, um, but I much prefer that for uh, this kind of figure. Um, it was done, um, I think, primarily because at the time this set was made, um, the face of the Mandalorian had not been revealed, and so no one knew what he looked like. So anyway, good looking figure. Um, his weapon is okay. It's a little bit disappointing to me, frankly. Um, it's a just a sidearm blaster with a brown lightsaber hilt and then that uh, claw piece there at the end. So that end of the weapon is somewhat accurate but the back there is no stock it should have a stock similar to this one so if you could somehow marry these two weapons you'd be closer to what it looks like in reality but anyway the figure is good even though the weapon isn't perfect uh, there's only so much you can do in lego though without creating a brand new mold so this set retails for fifty dollars here in the u.s which for the piece count of 540 isn't too bad. The last ATST I think was $40, so the price has gone up a little bit. But this is a newer property with the uh, Mandalorian. Some cool figures, and uh, with inflation and everything, I guess the, the new price point isn't too bad. It's a good build. I enjoy the, um, the overall aesthetic of it. It's kind of different. Uh, however, I don't know that it's necessary. If you already have the earlier version, Maybe you pass on this one if you're not really adamant about getting the uh, Mandalorian and the Klaatuian figures, Cara Dune figure. The ATST itself is fine. Um, it's pretty cool, actually, but I don't know that you necessarily need both of them. But I will say it's definitely better than the one from The Last Jedi, for sure. 
So as I say, overall, I think it's a pretty cool model. Um, but uh, I don't know that I would necessarily say it's a must-have unless you're a huge Mandalorian fan. Um, but anyway, this has been Christian with Brick Life Crisis. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave us a like. If you have any questions or comments, leave those below. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Take care, and may the Force be with you. Bye for now.